Okay, uh, thanks everyone for coming to my talk. Uh, first of all, I should say really thanks. So it's a Java developer conference. So people coming uh, during the lunch to the documentation talk is definitely outstanding. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, my name is Alek Ninashev. I am a tools hacker. Uh, I've started my career with Jenkins. I am now a community builder at Gradle. And I work as force and DevRel consultant. So maybe you recognize some logos here. Uh, yeah, uh, these are my communities. Uh, once you join a community, you rarely leave. And I'm also organizer of meetups in Neuchatel. So it's a small city in Switzerland. But if you want to visit and give a talk, let me know. OK, I have a lot of slides, but I'm not going to show a lot to you. So if you're interested, the full slide deck is on this core code uh, with examples, with references, etc., etc. So you can just follow there. And question to you, uh, do you write uh, change logs? Uh, do you have some automation for that or do you write them manually? OK, which tools do you use? Uh, which one? Uh, no, manually. Uh, yeah, so release notes, so something that describes uh, what is in your release. Okay. And uh, does anyone use the release drafter? Or other tools, maybe you use J releaser uh, or something like that? Okay, so yeah, I'm going uh, to show you release drive, uh, drafter. It's one of the tools available as a GitHub action. And uh, too long didn't read it, produces change logs like that or basically any other arbitrary format uh, that uh, you may want. It's powered by pull requests. It operates on GitHub. There are some ports to GitLab and other systems. But basically, the approach is it takes your pull requests, uh, it labels, etc., and crafts change logs from them. For developers, one thing, you do not have to care about commit messages uh, because you can always edit GitHub uh, body, GitHub title, so that you do not have uh, to ask anyone to force push to fix your change log, which is a good thing. OK, uh, my story, uh, actually, I started at hardware embedded engineer. And uh, I actually had a lot of troubles managing change logs, et cetera. And of course, like everywhere else, it's all Jenkins' fault. Uh, so yeah, it was my community. We had quite a lot of ways to define change logs, like Jenkins IO website, uh, change log MD. Sometimes it was on the wiki pages on Confluence. Then uh, we had GitHub releases, we had change logs defined everywhere, sometimes uh, just on Twitter by maintainers, sometimes uh, they just uh, missed. So pretty much a common uh, uh, documentation hell you might see in many ecosystems. And it's quite problematic to manage that. So for our users, it was a big problem. Uh, if you have ever used the Jenkins, you probably know that uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand what changed in the plugins. Uh, Jenkins is, whole, uh, is all about plugins, so you may have hundreds of them. Uh, we have progressive delivery for some, we have uh, other flows. So always it's a question what exactly gets updated. And uh, for our users and community, it was quite problematic. And also it was quite problematic for developers because we were coming to them asking, uh, so what changed today, etc. And we also had no answer uh, sometimes. Uh, and it was a big problem for the community. And actually me as one of community managers and several also there, I actually tried to fix that. And my first try was quite common. Maybe you saw this in these companies. We asked developers and maintainers to write change logs. And we, of course, documented how it's better to do. And of course, it was a royal mess because nobody really wanted to spend their time on that. I'm no exception. So I totally understand why, okay, how it can be like that. And for me, yes, it became a bigger problem because I committed on this initiative, improving user experience and documentation uh, for our end users, for core plugins, and I needed to do something more. Of course, uh, yeah, it was my assignment afterwards. And yeah, I don't like to write change logs on my own, especially for thousands of plugins. So I came to a conclusion that we need some kind of automation that would be portable, uh, generalizable, and that can be accustomed to needs of our maintainers. So this automation uh, would be quite custom. And in Jenkins, what we did, uh, instead of all this mess, 
of course, we decided to create it a new tool for that. But uh, good news is that uh, there was an existing tool called uh, Release Drafter, and uh, we were able to centralize almost all our change log uh, via GitHub releases and this tool. So basically, we have GitHub release, we still have change log MD, but sometimes it's synchronized with GitHub releases, and Jenkins website basically uses GitHub releases as a source, and then we uh, do some manual copy editing to have fancy change logs. So yes, this is a Release Drafter, and from here, I have a lot of slides, but I'm not going to show them. Uh, I think you rather prefer something uh, in the web uh, browser uh, for real, right? So who does use GitHub? And others? OK, so basically, it's portable to other approaches as well. Let me zoom in a bit. I usually operate on 34-inch display. And I just moved to a MacBook, so I will be. So yeah, uh, there is release drafter. And release drafter is a GitHub action. So you can just configure it in every uh, GitHub workflow, whether you use GitHub Enterprise or GitHub.com. And uh, it's configurable like that. You just say, I need a, a release drafter uh, that would be watching my branches. So here we have still master and documentation. You can see some, there are some advanced uh, configurations. But ultimately, this is what you need to uh, just define a target. Then you grant some permissions to release drafter because it will be modifying your release nodes. And this is a basic step that yeah, just uses GitHub uh, token and connects to your repository. After that, uh, the magic starts. So for example, in Gradle, we also use uh, release drafter. Uh, so we have a few projects, and one of them is Gradle Profiler. So what happens here? Uh, if you navigate to Gradle Profiler, you can see releases. Uh, so it's basically a release notes, uh, which uh, may look fa uh, quite familiar. And yes, they're generated by release drafter. So how it happens? Uh, we have a number of pull requests. And each pull request gets closed. And uh, once they get merged, we trigger a release drafter because something got pushed uh, to the main on the, to the master branch. And so there are enhancements, bugs, internal. And this is basically maps uh, to our change log uh, by label. So it's an easy way to actually do initial mapping and already categorize some changes you deliver. And you can always automate this part. Then, uh, how it actually works on the hood, as, under the hood, as I said, there is a GitHub action. Um, and if you, we go to .github folder, here you have uh, workflows. And uh, there, well, somewhere there should be a release drafter here. Oh, it still uses GitHub app. So it's, uh, obsolete service, but in modern, uh, it would use a release drafter uh, YAML with the file I presented. And it also has configuration file that actually defines what I want to do. So here I say that uh, there is our naming template. So by default, it uses uh, a semantic versioning, but you can have other versioning templates up to four digits. Then uh, we categorize how we map uh, labels to titles. Uh, you can have multiple labels. You can skip some labels. For example, if you revert the change, etc. So it's also automatic. Uh, through labels, and you can customize uh, your change log template if you need. So it's a very basic configuration, and it actually gets you this uh, simple change log. So if you need, you can have a lot more advanced features. But what I can show you is how we actually use it at scale uh, for Jenkins. So if you maintain multiple projects, of course, you don't want to have uh, configurations in multiple files, etc. And instead of that, with the release drafter, you can actually do a lot of customizations. So here, it's a Gradle plugin for Jenkins. It uses, I hope, a uh, common uh, ecosystem. So here in workflow, we has, have relief, uh, release drafter. So it's basically very simple configuration we include here. We could have enabled it by default for the repositories, but for now, we still do it opt-in. And here's our configuration. And here you can see that the configuration actually has two lines because all the code is actually located elsewhere. So on the organization level, we have uh, um, uh, a part of definition. So if you're familiar with GitHub ecosystem, there is ProBot. It's a framework that allows to manage configurations on organization scale too. And we actually have it unified um, for all plugins that want use to, uh, to use that. So there is some documentation we also include uh, in our site. And there is global configuration that we use. So here, is it big enough? 
Mm -hmm. So here, what you can see is basically our Jenkins default. So in Jenkins, we don't follow, follow semver uh, by default, for better or worse. So we use this format, but again, you can override it in the downstream config. Then we have a number of uh, uh, labels that we define, for example, break and change, uh, um, uh, removed uh, for break and changes, again, major features, enhancements, etc. Also localization, community. So it's default template we provide. Not all plugins use all the labels. So they are free to choose which categorization they can override it. And then uh, we also have some additional things. So for example, uh, in uh, Jenkins here, we just put the change log. So we don't have custom template. We just do what release draft generates. But we apply some regular expressions to actually help our users. For example, Jenkins for Jenkins Core, we still use Jira uh, for issue tracking. So it's not enough for us to just reference GitHub issue. And here, if the pull request title includes uh, uh, Jenkins dash something, we recognize it as each ID and replace it by the link. Same we do, for example, for security. Uh, we reference to our security advisories. Same we do for Jenkins enhancement proposals. And same uh, we do actually for security issues. So if the CV is referenced, again, we automatically inject it so that uh, our users can quickly navigate. And they already get it uh, through the change log. So what happens next? Uh, so you can also see that there is some automatic labeling configured. So for example, we automatically can discover documentation related uh, things, uh, fixes, etc., from common templates we recommend to plugin developers. So once you well, if you follow this pattern, everything is automated. If not, you will get all the flexibility you need. And actually, it helps us at scale because this is all you have to configure in the majority of repositories, just referencing that and everything works. We adopt it in other projects like Wiremock, uh, Gradle, so it's quite handy. And uh, for example, I can show you how it works live. I just need uh, to find a prey for that. So I'm a maintainer of test containers models uh, uh, for Wiremock, and I believe that uh, there are some dependabot pull requests here. Uh, no, I merged everything. So, okay, but then we have a Golang model, I have, hope. And again, I merged everything. So, <laughs> this is a problem when you do proper maintenance because uh, eventually you don't have so many things to merge. Okay, let's try. Okay. Best developer practices. Okay, uh, let me. Uh, sign, uh, find something else. For example, we have uh, a Gradle convention plugin. So in Wiremock, we use Gradle to actually define common build template for Wiremock extensions so that they can follow it. And here I have a pull request. So here, if I go to releases, you can see that a release drafter is also configured. So for the next release, we have one documentation change pending. And we also have a number of changes released uh, recently. So what I'm going to do, uh, there is uh, uh, an external pull request for improving creation of standalone jars. So basically, we, uh, some tweaks of to shading, etc., so that automatically we can produce artifacts that do not create binary conflicts. So this pull request was re reviewed, etc. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign the label. And here, I believe that it's enhancement. Actually, it's a big one. And after that, I click Merge. OK, so what happens next? We can go to our GitHub Actions. And there you can see that uh, there is a release drafter workflow that, is, uh, that got triggered automatically. And if you go to this workflow, uh, there is update release draft, which basically runs on GitHub Actions. And well, it's already completed because it's really fast uh, at the moment. It uses a portable Docker image, uh, JavaScript, and yeah, basically it updates everything immediately. And if you go to release uh, changelog, uh, we got uh, all the uh, packages improved, uh, included. Then what I do next, uh, because I have automatic release pipeline, as a maintainer, I can just go here. I open this changelog. Here I put a version that I want to use. Uh, yeah. So I call it uh, version 0.2. 2.0 and here it will be also 0.2.0 and then if I want I can copy edit this uh, release 
and uh, just add some text, documentation uh, links, etc. Or I just uh, can say publish a release. And then uh, another automation kicks in because I released the text, so it will trigger all the release pipelines, including deployment to Gradle plugin repository. And I have a release uh, with, uh, that uh, was just created with a few buttons, and changelog is already there. In a few minutes, everything will be uploaded and become available to my tenures and developers. So that's it, uh, how it works. I also have uh, a bunch of slides of advanced, about advanced features, which I'm not going to show to you. You can even create YAML files with the release drafter. Don't ask why I have uh, created that. And don't even try to repeat, uh, but it works. Um, and what I want to see that if you're maintaining it, it's also quite good for social media because you can use re these release drafts to actually uh, generate social media images, etc., like that, or like that, or like that. And uh, again, it is being generated automatically. And uh, even for Java projects, other projects, so you define your template, you define how you credit contributors. You can see that they are quite similar because basically I drag uh, the same template between my projects when I do automation, but you can create uh, something uh, else. Uh, so what I wanted to say, so in Jenkins we adopted a release drafter four years ago. We have more than 500 plugins using release drafter, and actually it improved experiences quite a lot. Moreover, we integrated the release drafter with some of our ecosystem tools. So for example, if you go to plugins Jenkins IO, uh, right now, yeah, uh, let's open configuration as code plugin. And uh, yeah, here, for example, you can see that there are releases. And uh, here we have progressive delivery, uh, so, but we also have release drafts with all the changes, etc., that actually integrated. And again, all of that automated. Soon I hope we will have the same uh, on the Gradle plugin uh, portal for those who use Gradle plugins. So uh, if you're interested in this ecosystem and integrations, uh, I'm happy to chat after the talk. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, you can definitely do the same. And uh, you can just open the slides, you can open any of the repositories I referenced, and you can just copy and paste and get it in your projects. And if you don't like uh, pull request driven uh, things, there is JReleaser, uh, Git Cleave, and other tools that basically do like that, but with similar uh, um, uh, change log policy. So all information is on GitHub, of course, and uh, here are the links uh, to examples. Any questions? Would you like to use something like that in your projects? OK, so if you want, uh, there are links. And of course, Tinkerers are always welcome. It's an open source project, so everything is driven by contributors. Actually, Jenkins team uh, has around six maintainers in the release drafter at the moment because we use it heavily. And there are still some bits we want to improve as a CLI, as documentation generation, etc. So for example, not just uh, 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 markdown generation, but also atom generation, etc. So we do more patches. And if you want to discuss it, there is developer productivity engineering channel on Gradle community Slack. So we have a lot of uh, tools and tinkering stuff there. So join us and uh, happy to chat. OK, any questions? Mm -hmm. OK, I still have two minutes. And if you want, I can uh, show you something about release drafter. Any, any questions you wonder about? Anything? OK. So then I will probably just uh, show you a few other bits uh, that oh, I, I'm not even sure what to show because we passed through all the main content. So then I can just give you a few more minutes for the lunch. And uh, thanks again. It's not usual that we have uh, many people at the, these uh, documentation talks. But I really hope that you as developers actually invest some time in documentation and uh, better user experience. Thank you.